Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Ethan Drew. Today, I'm going to be breaking down and analyzing what's happening in a video that has recently been uploaded by Voiceplay. It's gonna be slightly different from the original reaction and analysis content, but it's still gonna be a reaction and analysis. So what this video is from Voiceplay, for those who don't know, is that there is a video that they uploaded called Return to Sender by Elvis Presley, where they arrange an acapella cover of this song on the spot in a video chat. Now, this is going to be, I guarantee you, a good display of the talent that is present inside of this group and in their brains, because to arrange a cover of a song on the spot this quickly is nothing short of pure talent and skill. So with that said, we're going to dive promptly into this and we're going to see exactly what voice play has in store for us today. And so for those of you who do not know me, Hey, I'm Ethan Drew. I am a singer, primarily a bass baritone singer. I've been singing for several years and I play several musical instruments as, and as well. And my mission here on YouTube is to help you gain a better appreciation for and understanding of the music that you like to listen to every single day. And I like to do that through several avenues, whether if it's writing my own music, making covers of music that I like, or interviewing singer songwriters, as well as reaction and analysis videos. This channel is dedicated to cultivating that appreciation for music through so many different avenues and everything music. So if you like music, make sure you drop a like, drop a comment down below. Even if it's just a smiley face, it helps with the algorithm. And make sure you subscribe. A lot of my new viewers are not yet subscribed. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and hit the bell. Make sure you're notified whenever I upload so that way you don't miss it. With that said, we're going to dive promptly into this and we're going to see what voice play has for us today. What's up, everybody? It's time for voice play loop number two. The boys out here, say hi, boys. What's Yo. up? Hey, hey, hey. I'm it. currently covering One, up Lane's two, face. Three. Voice three. Play. I got a four. <laughs> I got a seven. Jeff? I got 11. Check there we go. Season. See it. All right, here we go. Hey, boys, let's go. Loop number two, let's Good go. Luck, fellas. I'm going to mess you up. I can't wait. <laughs> Probably. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another thrilling episode of The Voice Play Loop. Today, we're going to be tackling a song by the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley, Return to Sender. It's a song that uh, is super awesome. I'm sure that Lane is definitely not. I haven't heard this one from fun. Voice Play, um, but it's going to be know Mina from Elvis, but it's going to be good, I know. Sounding like, so we'll see if I can lead the guys in that direction. And then we'll see how badly they screw it up. We're going to start with the lead. We're going to bounce over to the bass line. And we're going to pick up the lead again at the end and see how badly I can screw this up. <laughs> I gave a letter to the postman. He put it in his sack. Yeah. 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 Okay, so... Yeah. He bottoms out at an A1 in chest there. So that was already really cool. Put it in his Zach. Yeah. yeah. So for those that don't know, what you're seeing on screen is pretty accurate to the way most recording actually takes place. It sounds very raw, bland, and at times messy. But that's what sound engineering does for you. <laughs> Good luck, Link. Okay. All right, so they're sending parts to each other in this video, it looks like. So let's kind of go into the two parts that Jeff did here. It's very brief, so we don't have a whole lot to talk about, but I do want to talk about it nonetheless. So they are building this acapella cover of Elvis's song, Return to Cinder, on the spot. And Jeff has chosen to do the lead part and the bass part for this section here. Obviously, he's going to do the bass part because he's their bass singer. But let's see exactly how he goes into this. Pick up the lead again at the end and see how badly I can screw this up. I gave a letter to the postman. He put it in his sack. Yeah. 
Then he goes into the baseline. Alright, so it's obvious that this video is cut and stitched together. So what I mean by that is that the actual video takes of him recording himself in, or recording his audio is shortened for the sake of time, obviously. And that's just a little bit of a note there, just so that way we can preface what the, what's being, or what's happening in this video. So... Yeah, it's, he really just displays him doing the ideal take for a few seconds on the lead and his part on the lead, and then he'll do the, the walking bass line that he's got going on. And what we mean by walking bass line is where it, it almost feels like it's walking, like it's a bit of a swing to it. Yeah. He put it in his eye. See what I mean? Yep. There we go. Good luck, Lane. And now we're on to Lane. He put it in his sack. Oh yeah, right there. That's where we're starting. He put it in his sack. He put it in his sack. All right, so this is gonna be good. So for those that don't know, Lane is voice plays beatboxer, and I'm really excited to see what he does here. That line that he put in there is a nice echo to Jeff's lead. And I'm excited to see what else he does here. So he more context here. Sack. Oh yeah, right there, that's where we're starting. He put it in his sack. He put it in his sack. Ellie's turn. Okay, here we go. So, not that much to talk about. Again, it's getting pushed back and forth to each other in this video, and that's the whole intent. But, let's listen to this perk he's got going on here. Ellie's turn. So, what's happening in the vo vocal percussion here is um, you got a kick drum, and then you've got two rim clacks, or rim taps on a snare drum so that sound obviously with it being a vocal percussion technique but if this was to be on a regular drum set it would be an actual tap of a snare drum on the rim of a snare drum and it's really cool to do this kind of beat because it's already like a walking kind of jazz piece almost you know kind of like 16 tons is but it's very creative. I like it. It gives it that flair that it really needs to feel like a jazzy walking style of song in this sense. Ellie's turn. Let's see what Ellie so does. This is like a return to sender to Elvis Presley. Okay, so let's see where this goes. Return to sender. Address unknown. Address unknown. That was awesome. All right, so there was really very little in Ellie's part here, except for some echoing and background vocals. And you've heard me say echo already, but what is echoing? So it is similar to what you think it actually means. So whenever you hear an echo, you think of an echo as if you were yelling into, say, maybe a really large room that's not furnished with anything. You go, you hear yourself, and then, yeah. So that's essentially what an echo is. It's where your voice, the sound of your voice, travels and attenuates in a large room, large tube, room, or tunnel, etc. Without any sound dampening material in it. So, with that said, excuse me, I was looking at my phone. With that said, though, what does it mean in the context of this video here? So, whenever I talk about an echo part, what usually happens is there is an echo in, the, in a second voice in the background. And what this means is that they're repeating more or less exactly what was just saying in the lead part. Obviously, there can be some slight liberties in there, like maybe a different pitch or things of that nature. But generally, echoing is just whenever the same 
vocal line or line of text is saying more or less identically to the lead, but a little bit after. So with that said, we're going to move on to this next little part with Ellie here, where it's just a background vocal. And for those of us that don't really know what exactly a background vocal is, it's a person or part that is saying quieter or literally in the background of what's going on in the actual music. Where this goes. Turn the sender. Address unknown. Address unknown. There was an echo right there. Did you hear it? That was awesome. Let's see what Caesar I'm does. I'm just so happy I have such a generational divide between the boys because then they... They teach me music from our history, you know? I've never heard this song before, but... Uh... <laughs> Caesar just called the rest of the boys old in the most nice way possible. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Let's see what Caesar does with the music here. Because then they, they teach me music from our history, you know? I've never heard this song before, but uh, I'm going to get into it and find a vocal part for it. Come on, Caesar. No shot! No way! Look! Caesar and I have the same microphone. The Aston Origin. That's really cool. Yeah, apologies if that made a lot of noise for you guys, but yeah, we have the same mic. That's really cool. He put it in his sack. Ooh, a second part harmony there. He put in a harmony to go along with Ellie's harmony in the back. So that's a that's a neat choice. Let's see where else he goes with this. He put it in his sack. So he's actually on the third harmony. And what that means is that there's in a in in a chord there are three notes. So in it sounds like they're singing this in the key of B flat. Bum bum so that note in that key, bum, bum, let's see, bum, dum, 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 dum. So that's the key and the scale of the song that they're singing. So, or the, yeah, that's the scale of the key that they're singing in, I believe. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's right. So when there's three no there's three notes in a chord and a B flat chord in in the key of B flat would be B flat bum the second one would be bum 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 so a B flat chord would be a B flat a D and an F. So the B flat would be bum the middle, the third, is what we call it because it's three steps above the root chord of the or the root note, which is the B flat. So pop. Then you have D, which is the third. Da. And then you have the fifth, which is the top of the actual chord. Bum. And then there, there's no more. After that, you go into the next. You go into the next octave. Bum. That's a B flat, same note as the root, but it's one octave higher. All of that to say, he is singing the third harmony. So there's a fifth harmony that's not being sang yet. So he's only singing the third harmony. So with the B flat, he would be singing a D. And I'll, I'll show you exactly what I mean. I'll point it out to you here, but... You may start to see what I'm talking about when you actually hear it. So listen to Ellie's part again, and then we'll go back to Caesar's part. See where this goes. Turn the sender. Address unknown. Address unknown. No such zone. All right, so let's move on to Caesar's part. Wow. 
Boom, he put it. Okay. He put it in his sack. Okay, so I was actually wrong. So Ellie is actually singing the third harmony. And Caesar is actually singing the B flat above that. That still makes it a harmony, but I don't know exactly what kind of harmony that's called or what kind of chord that's called. So any music gurus in the comments, let me know. Wow. <laughs> and that's another loop. Bye. A few nice job. Moments later. All right, Jeff. So I just got the track back from the guys. And true to form, they screwed it up. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's pretty close. But uh, I hear where I need to add a extra harmony part and a couple of tweaks. So Let's see what you get. Quick, and then we'll hear an the extra part. harmony. Return to sender. Return address unknown. I gave a letter to the postman. Okay, so, oh, I see what he did. So he's actually adding a, a chest kick. So this is a very nifty technique for those of us in the acapella industry. Primarily other people, because I consider myself to be a member of the just music, music industry in general. Not just acapella, but especially in acapella, the, the chest kick kick drum if you will aka the bass drum it is a nifty technique to get a nice nice strong punchy bass like dr bass drum like feel without actually using an instrument and you can do some sound engineering to it and make it sound identical to an actual kick drum and it's very very useful for that in acapella because Obviously, with acapella being without instruments and only using the human body or human voice, it you know it can, it can get interesting trying to emulate that kind of sound, other than using an actual vocal percussion technique. So he's got a nice added harmony in there, and then he's also adding the snap as well as the chest drum, if you will. And the Return address unknown. I gave a letter to the postman. He put it in his sack. He put it in his sack. I brought it early next morning. Oh, he brought my, my letter back. She wrote it. Oh, okay. Wait, we didn't hear. We didn't hear the. Uh, we didn't hear that thick bass in Jeff's part. Obviously, this part appears to have been cut out but we got to hear that bass again too. These harmonies, these riffing harmonies, fantastic. Put it in his sack. He put it in his sack. I brought it early next morning. I brought my, my letter, letter back. back. She wrote it. Brought my letter back. Jeff goes to a B flat and chest there. Obviously easy for him at this point, but he drops a really quick, really thick, E flat one in chest, which not in chest, excuse me, E flat one subharmonic, and I love it. It is just monstrous, monstrously, monstrously bassy. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so actually this might not be in the key of B flat. This might be in the key of A flat. So I was probably, I'm pretty sure I was wrong now that I think about it. Sorry, guys. Um, all right. A couple more things to talk about here. We're close to wrapping up. Ooh, there was a, uh, I think that was a cascade. No such you, no such so, so, so. Yeah, that was a cascade. So, cool thing to talk about, other than Jeff's bass here, is um, this cascade effect. It's You build one, two, three, four voices. And they all come in at different times a little bit later 
each time. See what I'm talking about in the background? No address unknown, no such number, no such you, no such zone. No such zone, right there. Zone, zone, zone. That's exactly, that right there is what is a cascade because the, what makes it a cascade is the notes are coming in later and they're lower in pitch each time. Fun fact. And what's also really cool about that is just the fact that they even used it in the first place. It's a very, very nifty trick to use in acapella arranging. So, yeah, I mean, I love that. I love that choice there. And let's hear ba Jeff's bass here. No such you, no such so, so, so. Just that fat A flat G sharp one in chest. Obviously easy for Jeff. He's got that every, got that note every day. Let's just listen to that meaty A flat in chest one more time. And then B flat. A flat. B flat. I'm sorry, but my Ellie did a water droplet in there. I didn't miss that. That was a nice choice. Keeps coming back. I need to say something about what Jeff just did on camera here. It is difficult to make a two octave note jump here. Or I'm sorry, one octave. So what makes that so difficult is accurately getting from one note to the other that quickly. So it's the same note, boom, bob, same note. But jumping from one to the other that quick like he is and still being somewhat accurate in pitch makes him a legend. Not very many singers can do that. And if they can, then they are very good at what they do. Bum, ba, ba, bum, bum, excuse me. Bum, bum. It's, it's not easy, as, as I just demonstrated. Ba, ba, bum, 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 ba. It's hard to do. It's hard to do. It's hard to do. It's hard to do. But he does it. It's just further proof of his incredible talent as a singer. I mean, just listen to how accurate the pitches are here. Folks. Okay. So, that will conclude today's video. And... Yeah, there we go. Got my camera fixed back. So, yeah, that was today's video for voice play. And I have to say, honestly, that this is a very good way to demonstrate not only the skill and talent voice play has, but to really encapsulate what acapella is, does, and what it's like behind the scenes. It's just, it's, it's a very good depiction of that. And being an acapella singer is not easy because you don't have the liberty of using instruments to actually use in the music. You can use them in, in the recording studio to help you line stuff up, but you don't really use it to actually create the music. And just to really get some insight into how acapella arranging can work through this form for other people to really understand that and for their audience to understand that be able to understand that by them putting this video out it's incredible and i commend voice play for providing youtube with and everyone with insight into not only how they arrange but how a lot of acapella ranging tends to go, albeit in a condensed form, but 
it's still a very good depiction of how acapella arranging for covers actually works. Ever talented as always, the voice play group. So yeah, that'll that'll do it for today's video. Again, if you're enjoying the content, you're gaining value out of these videos, gaining a better appreciation for the music that I feature on this channel or that I sing, I very much appreciate it. If you would like this video, drop a comment down below. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. And if you're looking to be, if you're feeling extra generous and you want to contribute to my success and the channel success here on YouTube, I would encourage you to check out my Patreon and that's the by, by far the best way to support me if you choose to do that. It is not required to view the videos or have a good time watching them. If you never pay me a penny in your life, I am totally fine with that. I'm happy you're here regardless of what you do to support me. This has been Ethan Drew. I will see you in the next video. I love you. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you later. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize, but I actually forgot to record the footage for today's vocal Patreon shout out. Videos like today's video are made possible by wonderful patrons like Miss Nancy Flesher. If you're interested in getting a vocal shout out like this at the end of my videos, make sure you hit the link in the description to my Patreon page where you can learn more about how you can support me. Love you, take care of yourselves, and I will see you soon.